look at a very simple one first. This is called a parametric diagram. The idea here is that in the model, in the system, I've defined these variables, these value types. If I highlight a symbol, I, there's all kinds of little modeling tricks in here. Like if I highlight a symbol, use my right pop-up menu and say, locate the entity, the element. Over here, it'll highlight it in my sidebar so I can go right to it and then see what it's linked to. So fuel flow rate colon real, that's a value type stereotype of type real with that name. And you notice it has a parameter. Okay, that, uh, excuse me. Uh, the, the, this a value type is a parameter associated with this constraint here. So look at this constraint name. Fuel flow constraint. Here we go. Fuel flow constraint. This is the constraint. Here is the equation, the performance constraint we want to execute. And these are the variables. Fuel flow rate. So here's flow rate. That is that. So here it's coming in to be used here. Here's pressure. Here's fuel pressure coming in here to be used there. Then we're going to do a division symbol and then a parenthesis four star injector demand. That's coming in from here. So the idea here is you define equation, then you define the variables out of the live model so that the, the engineer is focused on tying the variables to the constraint expression. Let's look and see how this is defined. You notice I've got flow rate equals pressure. Okay? So let's highlight the symbol. We've got to get to the specification item type where all of the frames are defined. So that's view, edit, latest. And then up on the home tab, I want to pick specification stereo for stereotype. Then it'll list the special stereotype frames where I can put in a an equation, an expression. So this one says define a constraint, an equation, and here it is. I just type this in. Flow rate equals pressure divided by four times the injector demand. Remember, I can plug in real live objects here, so when I run this through my simulation, it'll execute using the real live variables. So let's replace flow rate. So I'm going to highlight flow rate. I'm going to erase it. Then I'm going to come over here to my right-hand little arrow, click on it, and if I say, oh, excuse me, two steps. I've got to highlight which object I want to associate. So over here, what was it I had in here? It was the flow rate, wasn't it? So let me come over here. So I know that that's a value type. So there it is, fuel flow rate. There it is right there. So the way we want to indicate which one of these value types to use, you highlight it, use your right pop-up menu, and say links. Make link to. I want to do a link to this object from this expression, if that makes sense. So I want to link to this object in this expression. So I mark it by doing that right here pop up menu, links, make link to. Now if I come over here and come in right where I want to insert it in my expression, use that right here pop up menu over here, say item. References. I want to reference that item that I highlighted a minute ago. So item references, insert reference. Now click the new button, give it a name, like reference number one, because I may have three or four references in that same expression. So let me click on that reference number one, say OK. You'll notice what it did was, it took the object, the value type that I had highlighted, and said uh, uh, links, 
linked item two and associated with that reference. Reference one is associated with this live value type object. Say insert. See it did that at sign. That's a directive at reference. And there's the reference ID. So it references that live object over here. Now if I forgot what that means, I can always come back over to the little arrow and say item references preview and it gives me a read-only version showing me the actual variable name inserted. So let me undo that. Now let's do pressure. So let's get rid of pressure. Let's come over here and find the pressure. Fuel pressure colon real. Highlight it. Right hand pop up menu. Links. Make link to. I want to do a link from my expression to this object. Then come over here to the little arrow in the frame. Say item references. Insert. I need to create another temporary variable like ref1. This time will be ref2. I can name it anything I want to. So I'll say new. I'll call it XXX just to show you it doesn't matter what I call it. Let's see. I hope this works. So it associated the fuel pressure to that made up variable name. So I say insert, and now there it is. And again, if I want to check myself, come back over to the little arrow and say item references preview. So now we're going to use the flow rate, fuel flow rate, and the fuel pressure, the real live variables, when it does the, the actual math. And then there's the injector demand. So let's get rid of that. We're almost done. Let's see. Let me just get rid of that. We'll put the live variable in there. Ah, come on. Oh, I'm still in this read-only mode. See, I thought grayed out. So come back over to the little arrow and say item references, preview. Now it's back so I can edit it. Let's get rid of that. Now let's insert what type of object it's going to be injector demand. This is a fuel injection system, it looks like. Highlight it, right hand pop up menu, links, make link to, come back over to my little arrow. I want to reference the item, give it a wonderful little name. I'll call this one YYY. I'm being silly here. I would normally call it ref1, ref2, ref3, something that's consistent. But it doesn't matter. It's up to me. And there it is. Now, if I close this, that's defining an equation inside this stereotype frame with directives pointing to live objects. So if I close this window, Now, I probably have to do a refresh, so let me go up and see if I can refresh. Notice here is the original expression that was just my typed in plain text uh, equation. If I do a refresh, let's see if that works. Oh, look at that. There's my fuel flow rate equals fuel pressure divided by parenthesis four star injector. So there is my new thing. Now, it took up more space, let me just kind of drag over my little windows here. And now, if Cradle had a dynamic discrete event simulation already built in, we would mash the button and say execute, and it would go execute that expression, getting the live objects with their values to perform the arithmetic. We don't have that today, but we will in the future. Everybody okay? So this is a parameter diagram. Now I'll show you a diff and the idea here is I want to make the engineer focus on the variables and the equation that he wants to execute to look at performance constraints. Let's look at one more of these diagrams. We're not going to talk much about this one. This one just busier. This is out of one of the textbooks, uh, the uh, Practical Guide to System Engineering textbook. So this one, same concept here, where these are my constraints with their equations. 
the little rectangles on the inside are the variables coming in. And here I want to show where the variables were coming from. So this is the uh, friction force from the road and the car wheels. My duty cycle, the braking force for, for doing the braking force equation. And here's the equation. Okay? So this is just a more complex uh, constraint. Okay, so that's the constraint. So let's close out some of our diagrams here. We've, we've talked about the uh, structure. We've talked about behavior, the three forms of behavior. And now we've talked about use case and uh, parametric diagrams.